What's up YouTube? This is going to be another project video, but instead of something, you know, building something fun and cool, today we're going to be doing a little maintenance and repair. So, we're going to be working on my uh my wife's car and let me show you what we're going to be working on. wife's 2016 Jeep Renegade. Uh, over the last year or so it's started developing a um, pretty bad vibration at idle. Uh, I did a little bit of research and I have found out that uh, apparently the first couple years of this vehicle they kind of designed a, a, just a poorly designed uh, motor mount. So what we're going to be doing today is replacing the passenger side motor mount on this engine. So let me show you a little bit about what we're going to be working on here. All right, this is the engine bay, and that right there is the engine mount we're going to be replacing. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but you can just real look real close. You can see. In fact, let me see if I zoom in a little bit. You can see that sort of dirty line right there, that brown spot, and that black is the uh, rubber part of the motor mount. You can see here the motor mount's kind of pulled out from that. That is, as best I can tell based on the research, going to be the cause of the vibration that we're experiencing. So, doesn't look to be too big of a project. I think the biggest issue we're going to have to deal with is going to be supporting the engine from the bottom side uh, basically keeping the engine lifted up while we remove the motor mount so let me get out the GoPro get underneath the vehicle and show you uh, what we're gonna do for that the skid plate off we can throw a jack uh, you know the 2x4 or something on the oil pan there to support that side of the engine so let's do that now now that we got the hard part of the job out of the way next thing we need to do is Remove the air box. Looks like there's you know, a screw there, a screw there. Uh, let's see here. Looks like there's a screw there. And then there's one of the one time use clamps here, but I'm hoping there's a way to get this off without having to replace this. We'll find out once we get the lid loose. Looks like it's nothing special, just a couple. Looks like three so far Phillips head screws. And they do appear to be capture screws. Yes, they are. All right, so. All right, that's easy enough to shove out of the way when we need it. So let's remove the air filter, I guess. Based on how much it's moving, I feel like it's just. Yep, there we go. It's just pressed in there with rubber grommets. So, looks like we got a little clamp right there holding that on. I removed those three screws. Right now I'm, I'm holding the lid of the air box back, but I removed those three screws and it was seemed like it was held in there pretty good. Um, and what you'll 
you'll see is there's this that fits down in that rubber grommet, and then there's two more. Trying to do this one hand and stuff. There's two more. You got one and two, and they fit in those two little rubber grommets right there. So just takes a little snug, a little tug on that box to get it out of the way. Now we're just trying to get this clamp loose so that we can get the air box to so the bottom of the air box completely out of the way. Okay. Now, the air box is out of our way. This will be super easy. Okay. This is one amount that we're going to be replacing. As you can see, there's one, two, three bolts on the motor side, and then one, two, three bolts on the chassis side. Let's get those out and uh, get this thing replaced real quick. This is going to require a tool that probably most of y'all don't have. The only reason I have this particular socket is because I used to own a BMW and BMWs use these. So this is, this bolt right here is, uh, it's called an, an E-bolt, I guess. Um, what you have to have is this special E-socket. looks like that is a size 14 E-socket. Uh, you can get them at Harbor Freight's where I got mine, super cheap. I've really only used it one other time. Um, so, looks like that's what we need to get these bolts out of the way. Looks like that wiring harness, no, that won't be a problem. As you can see, I did, to make my life a little bit simpler, I did just throw a bungee cord around this over to the windshield wiper to hold the air box lid out of my way. So, let's see if I can get you all a good angle um, to be able to see what we're doing here. All right, break all these free and spin them out. I don't know if y'all could tell from that last clip, but the motor was actually starting to fall. So apparently my my little one and a half ton jack had run out of room. <clears throat> it wasn't actually supporting the vehicle, so had to grab the big boy out. Of course, all I did was you know throw that two by four on there, and it seems to be fixed. At least now it is supporting the engine. I don't know how well y'all will be able to tell that, but. Um, Obviously, there is no weight, no weight on that motor mount now. And let me get uh, get that last one out and get the new one in. Okay, yeah. I don't think that motor mount was doing any good whatsoever. Yeah, apparently this was such a common issue that uh, Mopar actually redesigned this whole mount. Um, in fact, I'll try and show you the differences between the two. This is the old worn out <coughs> floppy motor mount. And like I said, you can tell that is, I don't know if you'll be able to see in there, but it is just completely torn all the way around. There is nothing holding it together. And this is the new one. So as you can see, Looks like they added some to this, and they made this part wider, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like they just made the whole thing wider, and there's a lot more rubber in there. So, it does look like we're going to have to transfer over this little rubber grommet for the air box. So, we'll get the new motor mount back into place. Let's start with the... Uh, 
uh, start with the chassis side. Those are the shorter bolts. So those will be a little bit harder to get an angle. Plus those look to be good and wide. So get these over here and get them threaded in a little bit. Alright, get those threaded in. Just a little bit, still leave a little bit of play in there. And then let's see how hard it's going to be to line up the engine side. Alright, that almost started. <coughs> yep, that almost started. Okay. Yep, that one started. Alright. And yep, that one started. Make sure that was started. It feels a little snug. I just want to get it cross threaded in there. No, that started just fine. This is this is always the trickiest part. Something that's held into position three different ways, getting everything lined up. Right, that wasn't bad at all. All right, temporarily we're gonna throw this dirty air filter back in here just so I can see if it has less vibration. All right. Let's throw this. Air box to tighten it back down. One. Two. Okay, let's get our tools off and start this thing up, see what happens. <coughs> now the fun part. This is the part I hate. So we got the car started. Uh, right now it's in park. I'm gonna put it in gear and just see what happens. So put it in drive and yeah, that's a significant improvement in vibration. Uh, I do think there may be, you know, maybe one of the other motor mounts might be a little bit worn out too. So I do think there's a possibility that uh, maybe some, one of the other motor mounts, maybe the transmission mount might need to be replaced as well. But the majority of our vibration that we were experiencing while at idle in gear uh, was definitely that, you know, passenger side motor mount. Job took me about an hour. Actually took me a little longer because I was filming, but <clears throat> you know, most people I would say could probably get it done in about an hour. If you don't have the Trailhawk with a skid plate, you could probably get it done even quicker. 
Uh, didn't require any special tools other than that e-socket, which like I said, you can get at Harbor Freight. The part itself was less than $150. So if you've got a, you know, on a 2015 or 2016 Jeep Renegade and you've got a pretty, you know, an idle uh, or vibration while in gear at idle, uh, I would say most likely that's your passenger side motor mount. Uh, that's what my research has shown me. That's now yeah, what I'm seeing as well. So obviously I think we got this one fixed for now. I don't think we're gonna have to worry about replacing that one anytime soon. So uh, we got the vibration to go away. I'm gonna have a happy wife, <laughs> which is good. So thanks for coming along. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me and come back, check out the next one. Bye.